and what, at the end of the day, radical, innovative, conservative manifesto that we all got behind back in 2019, which reflected our values and our beliefs, we can't let that be confined to a corner somewhere. We have to stand up and continue to champion that. And I think in good news, folks, that's exactly why we're all here today, because we're committed to rebuilding, not just at a national level, but standing up and making sure our voices are heard at the grassroots, making it more democratic, fighting for the survival of our party and our values. And this is important, because if we don't, no one's going to do it on our behalf. That is a fact. So to Peter's point, we do need to take back control, and it is right that our voices are heard. And with that, as Paul has touched on in the debate just now, ensuring that we're heard, the party and its leadership are held accountable through the democratic structures that John has been championing for decades, and I really pay tribute to John Stratford. John has been an inspiration to me as well, he really has. And I remember back in the day when I joined the Conservative Party a long time ago, John was being spoken about then in terms of democratic structures and it is thanks to the convening that we are now able to talk about these reforms so that our members have a greater say in developing the policies, a greater say to select our candidates, as was discussed today as well, for elections and not have local associations just being imposed upon and put upon again and again and again. And of course that is about respect. That is about that golden thread and the respect between the party nationally and the grassroots. Now, all of this matters because at the end of the day, I've always said our members are the most authentic voice of the Conservative Party. You stand up for what we believe in, you advocate day in, day out. Our values matter more than ever before. And also, in my view, we do have to stand firm on this because we risk losing votes if we forget who we are and what we stand for. Our country faces some difficult challenges, and all countries around the world are challenged right now. The consequences of a global pandemic, inflationary pressures, and of course we're now witnessing as well the impact of Putin's war on Ukraine. But look, my friends, the solution to these challenges is not more state control. It's not more spending. It's not more taxes, which sadly are featuring in our way of life right now. In the 1970s and 80s, we faced colossal economic challenges back then. And the solution was not more socialism or greater state control. In fact, the solution was Margaret Thatcher, as we all know. The solution was robust, pro-enterprise, free market, property-owning democracy that Margaret Thatcher promised and delivered. That, my friends, is the reason why I joined the Conservative Party. That is exactly why you are all here today as well. And you were inspired to join the party, motivated to work for the party and support the party. And with that, we must never forget, and this has come up again, and Mimi mentioned this earlier on, as Conservatives, we must never forget that we are here to serve the public and do so in a way in which that promotes freedom, enterprise and opportunity. Because that's what separates us from Labour. The public will not vote Conservative because they want higher taxes, high spending and high borrowing. They'll vote Conservative because they expect us to keep taxes down, back enterprise, and defend Britain's hard-working, law-abiding, silent majority. So we need to get back on track to deliver that historic mission of 2019 and unleash that amazing potential that we've heard about today of the people and of our country. And we are at our strongest and we know we're at our strongest and our most successful when delivering conservative values and conservative policies in government. And values matter, because if we don't stand up for values, for freedom, democracy, for capitalism, I can tell you now, as Kane has put it so succinctly this afternoon, bad ideas take their place. History shows the terrible costs of bad ideas. Millions of lives were extinguished under fascism and communism. And even today, many people still live in tyranny, unable to enjoy the most basic freedoms. Progress is not inevitable, and countries can go backwards. We see it with Ukraine and Putin. We see it with China. Look at their presence in this country, stealing our intellectual property, having its spies infiltrate our parliament, our public policy, and our economy, undermining our values every single day. And here in Britain, while Keir Starmer, sorry, while Sir Keir Starmer, tries to present himself as a moderate. Behind that North London veneer, the Labour benches in the House of Commons are still filled to the brim with the hard left, Britain-hating, criminal-supporting socialists that wanted to see Corbyn as Prime Minister. Britain forced back into the UK and would cancel out our freedoms. 
Make no mistake, if we don't get a grip, we could end up surrendering to that kind of socialist nonsense. And that is why we must fight for our values. And it's not just about ensuring that our party is successful. We have to make sure that our country is successful and prosperous, and the opportunities for the next generation also come through. Time and time again, capitalism has proven the best way, indeed the only way to lift people out of poverty, to raise their aspiration, while socialism has failed. And it is totally and utterly incompatible with freedom. It denies people choice. It strangles creativity. And when governments control the economy, they always end up controlling and oppressing people in other ways. A government that tells you how to spend your money will also tell you what to say and how to think. And quite frankly, given that we've now forgotten the economic facts of life, it's no surprise that the bad ideas are taking hold across our country and institutions. The left are pursuing their own agenda of political correctness and political correction as well as woke, and this is now resulting in our institutions dominated by left-wing groups parroting nonsense on theories from race to sex education to rewriting history and using this as a basis to make policy. This nonsense and these distractions are created by the left, and it's obvious as to why. Because starting arguments about pronouns and woke or banging on about unconscious bias or debating what a woman is and telling us how and what to think is a lot easier for the left than doing the really hard job of governing and representing the people and standing up for public service. And we are the ones that has to stop this. And we are the ones that have to call out these bad ideas, reject them and stand up for what we believe in. So my friends, the good news is, and there is plenty of good news, we have been here before. And it is strong conservative leaders that have turned this around in the past. When Margaret Thatcher became prime minister, she showed what a strong conservative woman could do and could deliver for Britain and bring prosperity to so many. She brought back that same sense of optimism and can-do spirit that our friend Ronald Reagan also brought back in America. They turned their countries around and they took communism, they took it on together and they stood up for those fundamental values that we believe in. This is a similar moment. It also calls for strong, renewed, democratic conservative leadership. It is time for us to come together again, because hope has been in short supply in recent months and years, and we are the ones from the grassroots to bring it back to the top of our party. The UK is the greatest country in the history of the world. There's no doubt about that. We must throw off the shackles of these terrible bad ideas, the indoctrination of our young, the woke and cancel culture that has been spoken about today, and rediscover our values that made us great, and the values that are still shared by the majority of the British public day in, day out, that silent majority that we represent and we must stand up for. A belief in our freedom, including freedom of speech, individual liberty and free markets, a belief in democracy. And friends, that starts here. And it starts in our party by reigniting democracy in our party and empowering you, our membership, to have that say, to stand up for what we believe in, to rebuild the grassroots. It'll make our party, our government, and our country stronger. And importantly, it'll secure Britain's destiny as a beacon of freedom and enterprise and opportunity for all. I want to really thank you all for everything that you are all doing and Peter, David, Claire, everyone for your commitment. You know, the message is very simple. We do want to take back control. There's no doubt about that. But we want to ensure that our values are the values that continue to inspire generations to come again and again and again. And that the Conservative Party continues to be that most successful democratically political, elected political party across the world so we can see Conservative governments again and again running our country for decades to come. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, my friends. It's great to see you today, it really is. Thank you for all your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.